Hi guys, it's Skill Jim from the Superpass team, and today I want to show you version 1.2 of Superpass. You can download or update your application right now, and more information is found over at superpass.com. There's version 1.2 at the bottom right corner there. And here we go. So, <clears throat> the first thing you'll notice when you've updated your app is there's a new feature called Places. Now, Places was originally only available on the online aspect of the Dreamcast Passport disc for Shenmue. And so we've restored and recreated the whole of this feature for you um, with all of the available assets and for the first time since probably 2001 or whenever the passport service was shut down we've managed to recover all of the original descriptions for each of the places in Yokosuka in Shemu. so um, without further ado let's go take a look so as soon as you enter places you face with this tutorial just shows you how you're going to use um, this feature with the touch screen. So you can select each of the locations in Yokosuka and um, it shows you at the bottom right here uh, how many of the different places that you've you've um, you've tapped on. Keeps a count there. Display location details. Yep. So you'll see in a second. There's all these little question marks. So let's go into it properly. So all these little red question marks. So you can zoom in on the map with two fingers and scroll around the map with like one finger there like that. And whenever you press on a location, so let's start with the pond. Let's go down here. A little tutorial screen again. So it shows you um, a new HD image that we've taken for each of these locations. Here's the original description. And there isn't actually much more information on the pond. But, I don't know if you can hear. One of the really cool aspects of this feature that we've added is actual music that you'll find in each of these locations and also a little bit of ambience um, in the background there. So obviously you can hear the pond, the water um, fountain feature and the, the wooden shisho doshi. <laughs> which is what it's called in Japanese. <clears throat> so there's a really cool image there of the pond. And if you tap and hold on the little Dreamcast swirl up here, that is the original Dreamcast image um, that they displayed for this area on the, the passport disc. So it's cool to see the HD re-release version versus the um, actual original Dreamcast image there. So you can have a play around with all these all the different rooms and the, the Hazuki residence here. Let's have to check out the kitchen. Nice image for the kitchen there. And that's how it used to look. So it's it's pretty, it's quite a fun feature actually, just going for the before and after. And the kitchen here, we've uh, linked in san obviously. Um, she's mostly found in the kitchen in the game. Let's turn the volume the Hazuki family crest. And this is going back into the profiles from that you're already familiar with. So it's pretty cool, like some characters that are linked to a certain location, you can access uh, the character information there, if you're interested. Again, you can read the, the brand new descriptions there that have been unearthed. <laughs> Let's the dojo. That's Fukusan training. <clears throat> So you'll also notice there isn't actually, um, there's not actually 17 question marks here and that's because there's some general area shots as well that you can find. So tap around and see what you can discover. So I'll show you the ones um, for the Azuki residence. If you tap just the house, this brings up the main house. It's a nice uh, shot there and there's the original shot there. You can read the descriptions in your own time. Cherry tree, um, that's not a general, I just pressed on that. If you press there, that's the Hazuki residence. 
and um, I think that is all of them. I think there's just two actually for uh, Hazuki. So let's go into Yamanose now. So here in Yamanose, um, there's only five to discover. You've got the Hazuki residence again there. And like I say, there's a general area for the Yamanose area. See the contrast between the images there and uh, read each of the descriptions there. So it's a, a really, really nice, fun to use feature. Uh, this is probably my favorite feature that we've incorporated so far. It's, um, it's a pretty fun nostalgic trip. I mean, you can use it alongside the game for using a map if you want to, but it's just a really cool uh, feature for getting, you know, your, your bit of a Shenmue nostalgia fix with the different music and the different ambience that we've added. So definitely have a play around and uh, see if you can hear loads of different ambiences from each corner of the map, because we've added quite a few. I'll show you one actually in Yamanose. Added a bit of rain here. Dog barking there. <laughs> Go to the park. Hear the birds there in the background. Um, that's the Abe store. Abe store door opening and closing there, just in the background. You never tell me anything anymore. Did we tell? Now that we're in Dubuito, we've got shop opening times there, which are quite helpful. In store music as well, so all the shop music that you find. and the harbour. <coughs> really nice shot that one. Wow, that shot. So yeah, I mean, you can just go around, play with all the different locations, read the descriptions here. Here's, here's one for the, the gantry crane, if you're ever curious um, of the backstory of the gantry crane. Built by industry leader Terashima Heavy Industries, it was installed when the new warehouse district was built, but it is not much used now. As it often appeared in live-action entertainment TV series ten years ago, it is sometimes visited by people who miss those old times or fans of that nature who come to take photos. I mean, it's crazy again, the, the sheer amount of detail that they actually put into the game, that even stuff like this that you'd only be able to read or, you know, discover online has its own backstory so not only have you got the character profiles um there's a backstory for all 337 characters there's uh, these backstories for each of the buildings so you know just a random warehouse a warehouse that is anomaly uh, property of the u.s army until 20 years ago it was used for the storage of weapons presently it is completely unused the warehouse interior stands silent and while wooden crates and containers lie around no vestige remains of its former role as an arsenal 
it's just <laughs> it's crazy that they, they like originally thought all these these backstories and details out i mean what could you even say about the bus stop the okasuka transport bus runs between new yokosuka Hama and buta at a fare of 160 yen payment is made upon boarding so naturally there's no way to cheat on the fare it does not operate late at night so close attention must be paid to the time regarding the operation of the line Perhaps because of the critical comments from the town's residents for this important method of travel, it runs precisely on time. <laughs> Which it does. So that's really cool. Bus driver there. So that is the first major feature that we've added. The second big new feature in this update is back in the music section. We've added a brand new playlist for shops. So whilst we've got all the shop music available for each of the shops and buildings that you've just seen in the places maps we thought it'd be handy to have all these songs available at your fingertips in a handy playlist so um, all the um, all the tracks here that have got the little new leaf by them these are new tracks that weren't available in the app before you can play them to your heart's content or add them to your favourites, back into my favourites playlist there, and just create your own little playlist there. And a requested feature um, from quite a lot of people was being able to lock your device whilst listening to music. And whilst that's not entirely possible, we've come up with a, a cool alternative. So you notice this little purple lock. If you tap that, basically that just locks any input on the screen now. So. Uh, so you can go on your walk now, put your phone in your pocket and be <laughs> happy in your mind that uh, your phone's not going to get unlocked unless you swipe to unlock like that. So that's a pretty cool handy feature there uh, that was requested for, uh, by quite a lot of people. We hope that's uh, sufficient enough for your locking of the display needs. And again, we've added the zoom feature on the images there if you want to have a full screen cool uh, image of whatever track you're playing. There's a cassette there for Flower Girl. So some pretty cool features. And um, you've probably seen, I did demonstrate the, the music section before, so you're probably all familiar with this, but in case you're new to the app, this is the music fa uh, section and you can add songs to your favorites or remove them as a uh, as you want. Oops, did I tap that? Yep. And also there's the original little features there for all random repeat and repeat the song. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll show you, if you are new, I'll show you some of the other things. So we have the information. So you can watch original uh, character information videos here, tell you about the game. This is the prologue. <clears throat> Rio tells you about the battle system, there's only the mini games, etc. And we've also got the theatre where you can watch the original cutscenes that were part of the, the passport disc. So as you play through the game, pop the passport disc in, um, all the cutscenes that you'd um, watched, or at least the ones that they'd selected to be um, shown in the passport, those, um, those cutscenes would be displayed here and unlocked as you went through them. So Obviously, uh, it's not tied to anything, so you press prologue, and once you've watched the prologue, the next video there is available, Drifting Blossoms, you watch that cutscene, the next one's available. So that's how we've done it, and you can unlock all the, the cutscenes there. Uh, data review, there's a new section in data re review, so if you're not familiar with the data review, this basically is keeping track of certain aspects of your progress within the app. So because this is a fresh install, just so I can show you, I've only actually started the app three times here so far. I've only used it for 22 minutes. Um, but your stats will increase, and um, as long as you don't delete the app and, you know, reinstall it, your your data will keep um, progressing. So this is a nice little handy feature for the, the new places. Um, so this is places page. Number of times you've viewed the tutorial, location tutorial. And these are all the, the places and locations that you found within the places area, the, the section there. And we've done various stats for each one, trying to keep in line with the original passport disc. And this is the original data that you would have found on the passport disc that would be linked to a save file. 
so this is just an example so you know number of times you use your notebook number of conversations and uh, basically the two sides mean that this is like for this particular save and this is the cumulative for every save file that was found on the vmu at the time so say if you complete the game four times this is the the current play time and that is like in total of all four completions basically it's just sample data it's not it, it is based off a real save file um, but obviously um, it's mainly just an example to see the insane amount of detail that went into um, the game originally and the passport disc very un underrated feature the passport disc was back in the day so it's nice to be able to um, show you this information so you can get a you know a better appreciation for it Here's the list of all um, of Rio's goals in the game nice to little read through them and what else we got so you've already seen the profiles and some of these were linked to the places but in case you're brand new to the the app again here's all 337 characters for you to um I'm sorry. I gotta hurry up and get home now. interact with listen to and read their backstory each character has its own backstory similar to the places and um, some stats there based on the character really cool uh reading through these and we've we've captured voice audio for every character that has a speaking line in the game and a lot of characters have multiple lines so you can have a little play around with them here's mark you can zoom in on the character model keep tapping him and he, he, he runs through all these different voices <laughs> everybody ready and um underneath you can mark them off basically that is like if you'd met them in the game originally the passport these characters wouldn't be unlocked on the screen until you met them in the game. So we just thought we'd add that little chat mark feature if you wanted to go proper old school and play the game with with the Super Pass app here. Meet Mark. Mark him off. You've seen him. <laughs> that was a little bit of a pun there. Unintended pun. And basically the other, the other little features here are just um, <clears throat> links to each of our pages. So obviously... That's the Super Pass homepage, Phantom Riverstone. You've got to switch from Phantom Riverstone's blog page there. You've got my YouTube channel. You've got Shemu Forever's Twitter, Shemu Dojo's website. And we've got links there to Shemu 1 and 2 and Shemu 3. Just in case you want to check out the games. <laughs> you've not played them before, perhaps. Uh, about section. So this is just about the app. And you can leave us feedback with that handy little button there. We'll open up your email. And you can send us a direct message straight away and we do tend to reply um as soon as we read them really um so if you want to leave us any feedbacks or any comments or anything like that feel free to do so and we will pretty much 100 percent reply to you <laughs> in due time like i say uh, here's nozomi's message you can read through that it's a new one and settings you can specify volume of everything um, I've actually quite liked having the, the background music on 50% whilst um, using the, the places. Oops, a little bit too loud. So that you can hear the, the ambience and still have the music there. The music doesn't like overshadow the ambience. And other little features are being able to choose between Imperial and Metric depending on where you live and what sort of um, measurement system that you use. So if you use a metric in your country, you go into profiles, press on someone and their height and weight is in that system. And that is basically it guys. So if you're interested in Superpass, the app, you can get more information on superpass.com. Just click the, the download link at the top of the page and um, there'll be instructions there. So if, if you're on an iOS device like this, this is an iPad Pro. Uh, not exactly sure on the model. Um, oops, but uh, yeah, so you basically you just follow the instructions and download it through test flight. It's super simple. Uh, I've got a video of showing you how to actually install this from test flight just in case you're having some problems. Uh, I'll link that somewhere. Um, have, a, have a look in the description or I might pop something up here somewhere or whatever 
uh, and you can see that if you're struggling with the downloading the app for test flight and obviously the other link is just to direct to Google Play so you, you can go on Google Play right now if you've got an Android device or uh, a device like that, um, a tablet for example, like an Android tablet just go on the Google Play Store, type in Superpass and we should be there and you should be able to update to version 1.2 right now so thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed my little overview demonstration of the new features of Superpass and we've got more to come like always um, but that was quite a big update there, the places it took us a few months to uh, get that to you and um, with the uh, full-time employment and all sorts um, you've got to bear with us a little bit but um, we're slowly getting there, we're slowly uh, bringing back a lot of these new features, uh, a lot of these old features rather and uh, making them brand new and easy to use for touchscreen devices. Um, and it's it's been a really cool project to be a part of. And I hope that you've enjoyed being a part of the process as well by um, giving us feedback and um, enjoying all the aspects of what we've created here um, and recreating the original Shemi Passport that you know is no longer with us. So thanks for watching guys, take care and see you in the next update.